thank you for the invite. Uh, as we have 10 minutes, I will start straight away. Um, Arup is working in a few projects around the world to reduce um, the impact and try to demonstrate that you can decouple economic growth from uh, quality of life and environmental impact. And I would like to address this around six issues, which are described there, flexibility, challenging conventional wisdom, system thinking, resource efficiency, cultural shifts, and performance and accountability. And I think the, uh, the panel that was uh, before me gave a great deal of a, a context of what I, how we work and, and why clients are asking us to work with them. But I just wanted to point out that this is the bank that we can never bail out. And uh, we've seen a great deal of difficulties already in managing the process that we are undergoing now in terms of financial and economic crisis, let alone how hysterical markets will become when we slide into a big problem like a global climate change runaway. But I would also like to point out that um, if you take this piece of information, I think we are quite in a bad shape. If we want to take people out of poverty, and that's our main aim, and that's where we are growing and having this development model, we need 15 planets to do so. So before we get there, we'll be all dead, and this planet won't have people on it. So we really need to think hard and fast on how we're going to change our development model in order to address these issues. And I would like to use this very simplified way of understanding it, but you understand that. The impact on the planet is the, 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 it's done by the multiplication of population, affluence, and technology. And this is what we do today, and this is where we want to get to, uh, according to the IPCC, which is the best guess we have. Um, but if you look at solving that with technology, you need to move to an 85% reduction. Um, and if you want to increase uh, the element of growth so that people actually have the ability to grow in our, con in our conventional terms, you need a 95% reduction. So the key problem is that link, how you decouple that link that I'm pointing there in red, which is the relationship between the growth in the economy and how much emissions or equivalent emissions you put into the atmosphere. And this is a very good example of someone that, some country that has done this to a degree. This is Denmark, 10, 26 years, and they have managed to grow 70% their economy without consuming one kilowatt more of energy. So there are, there are some threads, some lights there that are helping us to define that. So the economic rationale, the Stern report was mentioned before, uh, talks about 1%, around 1% of the GDP to avoid further costs. Uh, those 18.5 billion US that uh, uh, is equivalent to 1% of the GDP of, at, at PPP of uh, 2007 in Brazil should be used to modify consumption patterns, policy uh, proposals, and how we produce energy, how we move around our cities, and so on. And that should be leveraged by other means, of course. Uh, to give you just a sense of what is happening in, in China, which is a, a, a part of the world that we are very familiar with, these are piece information from McKinsey, so it's not, uh, it's not our Arab information. But what basically will happen in China in the next 25 years is that you will need to build 75 Shanghais. So if you build those in a conventional way, in a business as usual way, we won't get there. And that's the challenge we all have. If you multiply that for China, for India, you will have the same, the same problem, most probably. And that's how we need to think very fast and hard about how we can replicate very quickly and have top-down and bottom-up policies to deliver this. So talking about projects and the, the themes, challenging conventional wisdom is a key issue. Addressing an issue like in Dongtang of a half a million people city that could run on renewables was thought to be crazy. And we welcomed the challenge and we demonstrated technically and economically that it was possible to do it at this present time uh, to develop something like that. And the basic proposition is to put more people on the side with more activities, and because of that, get more revenue out of that process, and because of that, increase the environmental standards of the project so that the actual impact is much lesser than a suburban type of development. And I would like to also point out an issue about flexibility, which is the other big topic on this issue, because long-term um, planning is very difficult to forecast and understand. And I would like to read this for you. Scientists from the RAND Corporation have created a, this model to illustrate how a home computer could look like in the year 2004. 
I'll show you the computer now. <laughs> That's the difficulty we have to address issues such as innovation and long term. And we need, as you, you, you can imagine, you can picture a computer, you know how better we've done as a, collecti as a collective group of people to address the issue in a much more efficient way. A flexible structure in Dongtang is about facing technological change and scale. So each of the phases is not only driven by the commercial needs or demands of that market, but also by allowing incremental technological change. So we can't have a phase which is too big in order to uh, fix infrastructures and technologies. So we have to reduce the size of each phase so that we can actually, but in 10 years or, 20 or 15 years, change the technological solution for the, sol the low carbon economy. And in order to do that, we have a very sophisticated model that it's about resource modeling, uh, resource modeling, where we can actually see the impact in terms of land use of all the other elements of the resource, uh, uh, let's say hinterland, that are affected by projects. And that's the process, but the actual project, in another case in the UK, uh, in one of the eco towns, is to demonstrate how you can actually create a regional ecology in a new piece of city, which is about growing food locally, using that for local consumption, then using the um, waste of the, of the food into the anaerobic digestion that then goes into the energy plant and then goes back as heat and CO2 to increase and accelerate the process of food generation. A closed loop, a system thinking for cities. The same happens in, Shang in Beijing where we're doing a project for uh, 300, uh, 320,000 inhabitants and the same issue is addressed in terms of keeping the local population, empowering them to access credit and technology to improve and increase efficiency of agricultural production for the new population coming into the city. And this is more or less how it looked like. But the core of the issue here is reducing, um, in terms of resource efficiency, is reducing. And a reduction of 65% in Dongtang is achieved by means such as microclimate careful design and, uh, and understanding where, where the predominant winds and the, and the, the, the main issues about uh, solar gain so that the city is put in the most optimum location to reduce the, the heat and the cooling peak loads of the plant that you have to build. And a good example of this is the closed loop that we've managed to, to go through in this project where you pick up the rice husk to produce all the energy for Dong Tang. You burn it, you capture the heat and the electricity, you use it for heating, cooling, electricity and transport, you capture the CO2 and the heavy particles for different uses within the city. I hope it doesn't stop now. And another different type of project in, the, in London where we've, uh, we are starting to work with the LDA in a very challenging project which is heat recovery of a large thermoelectric power plant in London which will power heating and uh, heating for water and, 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 and heating uh, spaces. Uh, to 120,000 homes. So taking all the waste heat of an existing thermoelectric plant and using it for uh, uh, increasing the efficiency of that plant from 35% to 80% and using it for uh, new developments that are uh, pointed out there which are densification of city, existing fab city fabric. And that, at the end of the day, um, mirroring what the, one of the presenters was saying before, is not only about uh, efficiencies and resource efficiencies uh, in the economy and the material flows. But it is about better quality of life. A person in Dong Tang living and working there will have 20 days a year at their disposal to do whatever they want. And that is increased quality of life. Um, it is about also understanding that it makes good business sense. Uh, narrow roads because less uh, traffic and less pollution means that the development ratio in terms of land to be sold to a developer is much bigger than what you can sell in a conventional development. And at the end of the day, accountability and performance are very relevant. So a project like Dong Tang, for example, is almost getting to a one planet footprint uh, by the means that I was describing before. And I would like to finish uh, with um, an opportunity for this region, which is the fact that Latin America is there today in terms of uh, energy consumption against GDP per capita, and that uh, American cities against European cities have that gap in terms of energy consumption, and that what we need to do in Latin America is to create the eco-infrastructure so that we don't need to go over and above that GDP per capita, the, the gigajoules that we are spending, and creating a fantastic opportunity for inward investment and growth for us. So the key points are here. Uh, you will have them on the presentation. But I would like to finish, in not to overwhelm you, with a fantastic example of a gentleman which was a student of uh, industrial design in Canada that also took the challenge 
only as a person. And he said, I want to improve the people's life that have been mutilated in terms of their, their, their because of landmines in, in, in Africa. He said, I need to change the relationship of uh, giving money from the developed world to these people. And he, he looked at the numbers and he said, look, this prothesis is 4,000 US or, or 2,000 US and they can't pay for it locally. They can't afford themselves to pay for it. So I want to produce a prosthetic leg that actually people can pay for. And he managed to do that. Two orders of magnitude. One person focused and thinking hard about how to talk about resource efficiency and affordability. And that's what we all need to do in the future to get to a low carbon environment. Thank you.